All right, everyone, I gotta get something off my chest. You know what I love about the Philippines? The way everyone uses their car horns. It's fantastic. Back in Portland, honking your horn is like swearing in church. You just don't do it, unless there's a real emergency. Someone had better be on fire if you're honking your horn in Portland. But here, here in the Philippines, the horn is not just a horn. It's practically a form of communication. You want to merge? Honk. You want the other guy to go? Honk. Is there a red light and nobody's moving anyway? Why not? Honk. It's like Morse code for drivers. It's like saying hello. It's incredibly polite, actually. A whole conversation can be had using just that horn. Hey, you go. No, 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 you go. Oh, you're too kind, but I insist. You go. All in the universal language of honk. And the drivers here, they've mastered the art of the polite honk, the impatient honk, the celebratory honk. It's like a symphony. Back home, you honk your horn, you might as well be wearing a sign that says, I'm a jerk. Here, you don't honk. People think there's something wrong with you. Is he sick? Why isn't he honking? Is he okay? It's cultural. You see, in the Philippines, honking your horn is like breathing. If you're not honking, are you even driving? And there's a real art to it. There's a nuance. A short honk, a long honk, a series of quick little honks. It's like they're playing jazz out there with their horns, improvisational honking. And I'm out there in the middle of it all, I'm trying to decipher what each honk means. Is that honk for me? Is it a friendly honk or I'm gonna run you over honk? You gotta be alert. It's a whole new way of interacting for me. See where I'm from, you use your turn signal, a little wave, a nod. It's very non-confrontational. Here it's like, uh, here I am, listen to my horn. I mean, what would happen if we tried this back in Portland? People would be in shock. Did that guy just honk at me? What did I do? They pull over, check their cars for damage, maybe call their therapist. It'd be chaos. But honestly, I get it now. It's not aggressive, it's assertive. It's not rude, it's communication. It's saying, I'm here, I'm in a hurry, so are you. And that's okay. In the Philippines, your horn is not just a tool, it's an instrument. And everyone's playing their own tune. So now, when someone honks at me, I don't get mad. I think, thank you for the music. Thank you for letting me be a part of this honking community. It's a revelation. I'm learning to speak fluent horn. Maybe I'll bring a little bit of this horn love back with me to the States. I'll start a movement. Honk if you love life. Just imagine the streets filled with the joyful sound of honking. What a wonderful world that would be. So really, what's not to love about this place? The sun's hot, I'm sure it's sweltering, but the horns are hotter. They're not just honking, they're speaking from the heart. And isn't that what communication's all about? And speaking of heat, why is it so hot in the Philippines? I mean, I was walking around today doing a live stream because that's what you do when it's Saturday morning and you can't sleep. And it was nearly 100 degrees out there. That's 36 Celsius for those of you who think in metric. And about 1,000 degrees for those of us melting on the sidewalk. So I'm out there, camera in hand, and every five seconds, literally every five seconds, I'm wiping sweat off of my gigantic forehead. My forehead is so big. Every time I wipe it, I feel like I'm cleaning a small car windshield. How do you folks live with this? Is there a secret society where you learn to embrace the heat? Do they teach you this in kindergarten here? They never prepared me for this in high school, I could tell you that much, not back in America. I'm from Portland, Oregon. It gets cold there. I can tell you that much. 
and the humidity. It's like walking into a wall of wet. You step outside and it hits you. Bam! It's not air. It's a physical presence. You try to breathe and it's like inhaling bath water. I'm streaming. I'm talking to my audience and it's like, hello everyone, welcome to my steam room session. Today we're discussing how to cook a human in real time. But you people, you're just going about your day like it's nothing. Eating, laughing, working. I mean, how? It's really quite impressive to behold. I see kids running around, parents unfazed, everyone's just powering through. Meanwhile, I'm here plotting the quickest route between patches of shade, planning my day like a military operation based on sun exposure and potential air-conditioned hideouts. And let's talk about the drinks here for a minute. Every beverage should automatically come with ice. It should be law. I want to speak to Bong Bong about this. If you serve a drink without ice in this climate, it is not hospitality. Go directly to jail. It is a survival challenge. I order a soda, and before I can even take a sip, it's room temperature. And by room temperature, I mean like the ones you find in those sweat lodges where people go to hallucinate. I'm constantly amazed at how everyone here just adapts. Is there a special training camp for heat endurance? Like day one, welcome. Today you'll learn how to fry an egg on the sidewalk. Day two, now we'll all practice smiling while sweat pours into our eyes. It's impressive, seriously. I would last two hours max. That's about how long I lasted today. You've got this toughness that's almost supernatural. It's like you're part lizard or camel. Is there a little bit of cold-blooded DNA that helps get you through? And yet, here I am wandering through your streets, making a live stream that's part weather report and part survival documentary. And here you can see a grown man lose eight pounds of water weight in real time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's not just the heat, it's the radiance, the energy. The Philippines is vibrant, it's alive. Even under the solar assault that defines every summer here, and I've already been here a year. Where does the time go? And yet somehow, despite the sweltering heat, you've all mastered the art of living vibrantly, cool under pressure. You wear the weather not just as a condition, but as a character trait. So to all of you watching from cooler, less aggressive climates, next time you think it's too hot, just remember somewhere in the Philippines, there's a person casually sipping a lukewarm drink unfazed, no complaints, while tourists like me are spontaneously combusting in the sunlight. How do you do it, Philippines? And can you teach the rest of us? Don't forget to like and subscribe.